Okay, we're making another Alters video. Uh, this is Alters video three, and this was based on the question, um, what like crystals and stones are for the altar and what are for the body? And um, I think it's kind of like the answer is yes on that one. Um, I've, I love this question so much. Um, I really had to think about things um, in my room and in my practice and look at some of like the crystal videos like Laura Ellis has on Instagram or, um, you know, look at like what some stores and people were selling like the Zenden in San Pedro or like the Goddess Well Shop or Zuzu's Healing Arts or Open Eye Crystals or any of those places. I was like just watching all of the stone and crystal uh, exposés of amazing things and so I want to thank you for that question first because it just really threw me down a rabbit hole with the question so I think the answer is yes yes crystals are for the altar and yes crystals are for the body generally almost universally what we're looking at here is two things right so one the crystals that you're putting on your body is the energy that you're consciously deciding to carry with you to add to your own personal vibration, right? So if you're carrying a piece of pyrite, maybe this is adding a little bit of energetic balance for you. Um, I like to put one on either side of my body, left and right. Uh, maybe with a piece of tourmaline, this is also doing the energetic balance and doing a little protection by helping me to remove unwanted energies from my system. You know, um, it depends on what the use of the crystal is. Everything vibrates with a certain frequency and there are common understandings about what these stones and crystals do and you're welcome to choose your own source for those um, and whatever feels right in your own heart and body, right? Um, to decide what those are. But I could also use this crystal on the altar for a similar purpose. So I would translate it this way. If I was doing a ritual or a spell to accomplish something in the world, I might use the stones and crystals on the altar to create like a beautiful crystal grid or to place them in certain directions. You know, we talked about directions in the last video. Um, we talked about uh, the first video, altars being sort of a cosmology. I might include different crystals or things to represent stuff. So like this one I have on my altar and it's um, this little pillar. Um, I, I use this to connect to very Capricorn energies. So that there's a divine father there or there's like a God energy that's there. And um, I use this one on my altar. This is a rock from my yard. This is to bring the nature, the spirit of where I'm at into my place. This is on my altar, right? I might put those on my body, right? It could be done. It's a little wonky. You know, like if I'm laying down, I, I could put this on here. I think that this is still within the, the realm of a good weight. I might lay this on me if I felt like it was energetically appropriate. I don't know that I would stick it in my pocket and carry it around. Um, although I could take a smaller piece of it and do that as well. The only thing I could think of when I was thinking about crystals and stones when I would say what I wouldn't put on my body is probably something that has more to do with consistency or the components of the crystal itself that might make it fragile um, or pokey and stabby. And I don't want those on my body at all or maybe too heavy. And so I have this one ugh, that I got from my yard. And this is a meditation piece for me. This is definitely one I don't put on my body, although I do put my body on it. I often rest my feet on this one as a way to ground myself and connect to the earth. So on the body, on the altar, it just depends on what we're using it for. For myself personally, um, I might put things in a little pouch, right? And so I have some stones inside here that help me connect to a goddess energy. Or I might put them um, in this little pouch that I have here. You know, this is a lovely piece of kunzite there. Um, and, uh, and, and I might carry this, it's a little bit bigger, I might carry this in, um, in my pocket, but I could probably also put it near me wherever I'm sitting or working. Um, as a way to sort of have like, this is my little grab bag of the vibration that I want to have with me. Um, I even have a little intention. We had an intention last week in the, in the altar video. I have an intention in this one that I carry with me on that. Um, those are ways that I can carry them. Some crystals and stones though are, you know, like selenite for instance, you know, like when it's in this carved sort of piece like this, it's fairly robust, although it tends to flake 
right? Little pieces tend to come off to it. And ultimately, in the end, if you leave it in water too long, it is a little water soluble, it might change shape. I've meditated with pieces of selenite that have, uh, after years, uh, resembled the shape of my hand. I couldn't find that piece to bring for you today. Um, or um, it might be like maybe scolocyte is one that comes in these big, right, you know, um, and its natural state has like these like fronds that shoot off of it. Um, you usually get like tumbled pieces to put in your pocket, but probably a delicate piece is not something that you want to carry around with you on your body um, because it breaks and you don't want to break a nice crystal, right? Um, most crystals and things, I'm being very general here, and I'm sure, um, you know, there are, are people who are more deeply, um, you know, committed to the, the crystal process than I am. This is just a component to what I do. Um, might have more nuanced tells on that, but in general, I would say a lot of what you put on an altar can also be carried on the body. In fact, if you did something neat and magical, like I did something from Raven Gramasi's um, uh, last book, What We Knew in the Night, um, which was connecting a crystal to a piece of jewelry, to a stone on my altar, to a stone in the earth. And so it resonated with that energy. And so what I use that as an example for is that, say I was using, you know, the, um, the, the we'll say a, a black stone to help absorb negativity and the pyrite because I had these before me and this was a way that I was using on my altar to help absorb negativity and create like a very protective field with this pyrite right on the altar and I did like a little grid of that and um, you know I had that set up and I might have done like some candle work or I did some energy work to to really charge that space up maybe I use sacred geometry or something you know this um, crystal grid type of thing I might then have two pieces, like these two little pieces, in the middle of that geometry to soak up that energy, and then I would carry those with me in my pocket, right? Or some people like to put them in their bras, right? You know, just put them around places. Um, or maybe it was a piece of jewelry that had those components of that you could wear, right? Um, or like earrings, you know, or, or one of those things. And that's a way that it's both, right? You have both of those things together. Generally, what you do on an altar that involves the things that are in it, they will carry that resonance of, of that particular ritual or that spell uh, until they are cleared um, or that fades. I find, right, that if I brought a piece of quartz in and I charged it in a ritual that was involved for a certain thing, it might still have some of that energy in it afterwards and I carry that with me for it. Um, this might delve into cleansing crystals and stones and that might be a whole other uh, video for us, but I just wanna say that that's a way that it can be both. It could be on the altar and it can be with you by bringing those together and doing a little meditation or some magic or some energy work there, setting your intention and carrying them, um, leaving one there and then carrying them. So it's for both. Um, the, there's a couple of stones that contain um, minerals and elements that are not for human consumption. So there is things like naturally occurring leaded quartz um, or things with sulfur in them and other minerals. And you want to look at like the details of those stones and crystals because maybe you don't actually want to touch those, right? And I think that there's less of those than there are more that you want to be able to carry with you. But, you know, I think it's always wise to do some reading and some research, not just the metaphysical properties you know, but also the, the actual like lapidary properties of a stone so that we know that what we're getting ourselves into. There was a running joke for a while about um, uh, people using crystals and stones in the you know, shape of lingams and things uh, for personal pleasure. And uh, I'm all for that. But some of those stones uh, you don't want to use, right? Because you don't want to put them in your body because it would do different things to your body. Not to necessarily go down that route with this video, but I just want to say as an example, there are stones and crystals that you don't necessarily want to put in your mouth or put in your body or carry on you because um, exposure may be not good for you, right? Uh, generally speaking, find yourself a good book, uh, find yourself a good crystal person um, if you're not really familiar with them. Um, there's lots of different opportunities and there's lots of different literature out there um, from the metaphysical and new age to the pagan spectrum. All those lots of those things are very similar for you to draw on. And I am going to leave this video at that. I hope you enjoyed this third installment in the altar videos.